Okay, guys, welcome back. Uh, so I've had a number of questions recently, specifically around the electrical system on this generator. You know, the ignition, the oil, low oil shutdown, uh, the electric start. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to, you know, walk through those different systems and how they work. Um, and for the most part, whatever this generator has can be applied to almost any piece of yard equipment, whether it be a lawnmower, a tractor, you name it. Um, this is a four cycle engine. Um, two stroke engines are slightly different, uh, but not much. And this, this generator pretty much has everything you'd find on a piece of yard equipment. Um, some have you know, no electric start, no battery, no recharging system, and just the ignition system. So um, I'm gonna start with that, but before doing so, um, I'm gonna take you through kind of troubleshooting. You know, say you have a piece of equipment, it won't start, and you're not sure why. There's really only three reasons something won't start, three main reasons. It's no spark, no fuel, or no compression. And for me anyway, the easiest way uh, to kind of rule out things is to start with starting fluid. And, you know, some people don't like starting fluid, but I think it's necessary, especially when the machine isn't running at all. If you're using it regularly, then, you know, maybe there's something you need to fix. Um, but in the case of something that doesn't work, um, it's part of the kind of the triage process. Um, so normally what I do is, you know, when I buy something, I buy it used off of Craigslist or whatever. I don't know the history on it. I have to review the machine real quick, you know, check the oil, check for any loose linkage on the governor, um, check for anything, you know, unplugged wires. Just make sure it's safe to start. And then usually I will pull the recoil. I'm not trying to start it, just want to feel that there's compression and I don't hear any strange noises like pieces inside the engine. Um, so that's the first test. A uh, second test is if it will not start, you know, I make sure the engine is set to run and I pop off this air cleaner um, and underneath is an air filter and you pull that out as well. And that's where you would spray a little bit of starting fluid um, into the carburetor. You know, just a second or two, you just want to see that it starts and sounds healthy. Um, if it does start and sound healthy, after you give it a little squirt, you know, you pull the recoil, then you know your problem's fuel. You know, usually you start with the carburetor, either clean it or replace it, and work your way backwards. It could be something as simple as your fuel is shut off, you know, fuel filter clogged, something's wrong in the gas tank. Anyway, it's, it's the fuel system, so you need to go through it, um, which I'm not going to cover in this video. The other issue is compression. Um, as I mentioned, you know, just pulling the recoil, you can get a good idea if an engine has compression or not. You know, if you pull it and there's absolutely no resistance, then something's not right. Um, but if you pull it and you feel that um, part where the cylinder starts compressing the air, where it gets hard to pull and then it gets easy, then you probably have compression. Um, if you happen to have a compression tester, you can find out more information on that, you know, exactly how much compression you have. But on engines like this, they have compression release. So you're never going to get a truly accurate number. Um, but if you want, you know, this here, this just basically you unscrew the spark plug and put this in the spark plug hole and there's a few different sizes to pick from. And then you hook up this gauge and pull the cord. And with the compression release, you're really not going to see anything above 60. You know, healthy engines obviously in the green. So you're not going to know if it's healthy necessarily, but you'll know at least it's not zero. Um, and then the last test you can do too, if you don't have one of these, um, you could also pull the spark plug and put your thumb on the spark plug hole and pull the recoil. And when you put your thumb on the hole, not in it, on it, you know, the compression should push your thumb off, you know, push the air out, and then you know you have compression. Um, and then the main reason why we're here today is spark and all the other wires associated with ignition. Um, if you're not sure if you have spark or not, you know, say the engine didn't start when you put the starting fluid in there, um, the easiest thing to do is to just pull that spark plug out of um, the engine and 
you know, take a quick look at it. Make sure there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's gapped properly. You know, just look for anything obvious. Um, and then with the boot still plugged in, you know, you basically find a spot on the engine where you can hold the spark plug and pull the recoil. And that way you can see if there's spark or not. You know, careful not to touch the end because you will get a nasty little shock. Um, but if you can see spark and or hear spark, um, then you know your ignition's good. But let's just say you don't see any spark. Um, there's a few things you can check before, you know, tearing into the ignition coil. First one is just try a different spark plug. Um, you know, if you have it, if you have a different spark plug, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same one for this engine that you're working on. You know, you don't have to insert it into the engine. It really, you're just looking to plug it into the boot and do the same test, you know, holding it against the engine and seeing if you get spark. You still get no spark, then um, you're probably going to have to dig in a little bit. Um, or if you have one of these, the spark tester, you can do one more test before pulling it apart, which is basically... You put this in line, meaning, you know, say this is the spark plug that's in your engine. You plug the spark tester into it. And then on the other end of the spark plug tester, sorry, ignition tester, you plug in the boot that's normally plugged into your spark plug on the engine. And this kind of sits in the middle. You know, set the engine to on again, pull the recoil, and you're looking for this to, to light up, basically blink every time there's a spark. Um, if you see it lighting up, then chances are your problem is not the ignition coil. It's back on this end. You know, again, bad spark plug. Could be a bad wire or even the clip that holds on to the spark plug could be bad. So check those things out. Um, if you are not getting spark, this isn't lighting up, you're not seeing a spark on the plug, uh, then you need to pull off the recoil which is also the blower housing. And usually there's just a few bolts going around. Uh, this one I think has four. You take those out. Sometimes you have to get other stuff out of the way, but once you get those bolts out, this just comes right off. And behind there, you'll see the fan, uh, something like this, attached to the flywheel. And the ignition coil is next to the flywheel. It's almost touching it, you know, something like that. So on the ignition coil, there's only two wires. And one wire is for shutting it off, and the other one goes right to the spark plug. So the next thing to do is to pull off this wire, which is basically the kill spark wire. That's the technical term, right? And do the test again, see if you have spark. If spark comes back, then you know there's something wrong with the shutdown wire. Either, all this is is a ground wire, so if you touch this wire to the engine, you'll shut down the generator by killing spark. And the switch, when you switch it to off, that's all it's doing. It's essentially connecting this wire to the ground on the engine, and the engine shuts off. Um, so if the spark came back when this is unplugged, then you know there's something wrong. Either your switch is bad, your switch is off. Uh, you could have some insulation missing on the wire and it's inadvertently grounding out um, or something else like low oil. And I'll show you that in a minute, but that works in a similar way by sending a shutoff signal. Uh, the other issue you can take a look at here is that, you know, this has to be gapped properly. Uh, there's a magnet on this um, flywheel and it's only supposed to be, I want to say eight thousandths of an inch. Uh, gap here, which is about the thickness of a business card. Uh, so if you loosen the bolts holding this on, you see how this is slotted, you can slide this out, put a business card in, and basically you want to rotate the flywheel to the magnet side, and then loosen these screws and let this sandwich against the magnet in the business card. And that'll give you the proper gap, and then just tighten it down, remove the business card, you should be all set. You know, turn it, make sure it's not rubbing anywhere. Sometimes rust or other imperfections can knock into this because it's so close. You know, test for spark again. Still no spark. You know, this wire has been taken off. No spark. 
but you've regapped it, no spark. Um, chances are your ignition coil is bad. Just get a new one. Uh, but if you want, you can do a resistance test. Um, if you have a meter, just set it to ohms. And the way you test the resistance is one wire just goes on the body here of the coil. And the other one goes where the spark plug connects normally. And I know that this, this is a Briggs coil. It should have about um, 4.7 thousand ohms, which you can see it does. Uh, every coil is a little different. You know, I'd say four, five, six thousand might be okay. Uh, once you start getting above that, I would be suspicious about that coil. Um, anyway, a lot of times coils do go bad. So if, you, if the number is high or open circuit, just get a new coil. So assuming that it did work when you unplug this, um, I mentioned the low oil sensor could be also causing this to ground out. Um, a lot of engines don't have low oil sensors. Uh, this one does. And the way this works is for this one, there's an oil sensor inside the engine, which is um, sending a wire out, which is basically a, a ground wire. Normally, it's just an open circuit. Um, if it senses low oil, it'll ground this wire out and shut down the engine. So one thing you can do, if, if this is broken for this type of sensor, you have to open the whole engine case to replace it. Um, so you might want to bypass it in that case. Um, just be aware that if you are low on oil, the machine will keep running and destroy itself. Um, but to test this, you could actually just unplug this wire here and use the same meter. And basically you're checking between this and ground to see if there's a connection. And if there is, you know this sensor is tripping. Um, also, if you unplug you know, the wire and you get spark back, then you know that's the problem. But the way this works is again, wire comes out and goes into here. Um, I think this serves a couple purposes, but one of them is to almost build in like a little timer. You know, so if this sends out a shutdown signal periodically because the oil's all splashing around, you don't want to kill spark immediately. You want a slight delay. So that's what that does. Um, and either of these can go bad. Um, this one obviously is easy to replace. And if for some reason you can't replace it, you know, you need it to run now, just unconnect this wire here. That'll essentially bypass this ignition module, sorry, low oil shutdown module, as well as the switch itself inside the engine. And um, should bring spark back. Uh, this black wire runs up and basically back to the coil. So that's the other way that coil can receive a shutdown ground. Um, and that's basically it for the ignition system. Um, really all you need for an engine to run is that coil and the spark plug boot connected to a spark plug. If you want to shut it down, it's a good idea to have that other wire. But that's it. There's really not much more for the basic ignition system. This generator also has a few other systems. Uh, one is the electric start. Um, and in order to accomplish that, there's a battery. And this battery um, has two big wires coming off of it. Uh, the black one goes right up actually to the stator housing and is bolted right on. So this whole chassis has a negative ground. Uh, the positive comes up into this right here. This is a relay and there's two posts on it. It's kind of hard to see, but this is the hot one coming from the battery. And this one's currently not hot, but when you tell the engine to start, basically power gets sent to this post and then it goes right up to the motor and the motor is just negatively grounded. That, it doesn't need two wires, it just gets a hot wire. The negative comes from the body of the machine. So there's two other wires here coming off this hot post. One of them goes right up 
actually make sure, let me make sure I get this right, yep. One of them goes right up to here. And that's how you charge the generator. You know, it has a wall adapter, plug it in, charge it periodically, and that's it. Uh, there's no other charging system on this. You know, a lot of um, engines, like tractors, they have their own charging system to charge the battery. This does not. You would think it would, making 9,000 watts, but it doesn't. So that's important to know. If you never charge it, the battery will eventually go dead. Anyway, so that's what one of those wires is for, is for charging. The other one, which is this one right here, actually goes right into the solenoid. So this solenoid has hot fed to it all the time. And there's another wire coming down with this black and white on it. I believe this is a negative. And when you hit start on the switch, it sends the negative down, which goes into the solenoid, firing the solenoid, connecting those posts, turning the starter on. And that's basically, that's basically it for this whole electric start and battery. Uh, you can see too, there is a fuse. Uh, from what I can tell, I think it's the, I think that's the fuse that's associated with this charging port. Anyway, I know this is a lot, not my typical video, but I hope this uh, video helps someone with an engine or a generator uh, that's not starting. Thanks for watching. Sorry, one quick addendum here. I did mention it's almost the same for two-stroke engines, or you know, but there is a small difference. Um, you don't want to use starting fluid, or in my case, carb cleaner. Um, or if you do, it's at your own risk. The reason for that is two-cycle engines have their oil mixed in their fuel. This does not. Um, so if you use that, your engine's not going to get the right amount of oil. Even though it's only for a few seconds, you're, you're not doing your engine any favor. Um, in that case, I would just take the spark plug out, dribble a little bit of two-cycle mix into the spark plug hole, put the spark plug back on, and try starting it that way. Um, you can actually do the same for four-stroke as well if you don't have a spray. Just take the spark plug out, carefully put a little bit of gas right on the spark plug hole, you know, put that spark plug back on, try to start it.